putting God above all else. As Solomon grew old, his wives turned his heart after other gods, and his heart was not fully devoted to the Lord as God as the heart of David, his father had been. First Kings chapter 11, verse 4. With all God had given him, how could someone as wise as Solomon get so far off the narrow path of obedience and so far away from the Lord's ways? Could it be that his wisdom turned out to be a point of pride? Did he think that he was the one responsible for all his wealth and blessings and not God? For half of his 40 year reign, Solomon seems to have exercised his wisdom in ways to please God. But little mention is made of Solomon's prayer life during these years. He presented sacrifices to the temple three times a year, but there is no record of his conversation with God during those visits. Perhaps the temple visits became merely a formality. At the 20 year mark, cracks began to form the structure of Solomon's reign. The first indication of a problem could be seen in the way he treated a friend, I remember giving him a cheap gift. Chapter 9, verses 10 to 14, the Queen of Sheba writes and he prays on Solomon for his wisdom. Though she was careful to give God the credit for Solomon's success, despite this foreign leader's enthusiastic words about the God of Israel, there's no hint in the passage that Solomon agreed with her or encouraged her interest in the God who bust his kingdom. Solomon's reputation led to great riches. He accumulated things, ships, horses, gold, chariots, palaces, and women, lots of women. He filled his life with treasures, and that's where his heart ended up. King Solomon's greater riches was than all the other kings of the earth. Chapter 10, verse 23, God had promised us if just Solomon had asked for wisdom to rule the nation, God responded, I will give you what you have not asked for, both riches and honor. So in your lifetime you have no equal among kings. Chapter 3, verse 13, with all that wisdom, the riches should not have gone to his head, but they did. Jesus said, where your treasure is there, your heart will be also. Matthew chapter 6, verse 21, when Solomon's heart was focused on his material wealth, he was easy for his foreign wives to his head away from the God who had so richly embossed him. Any one of us can be tempted to put the things of this world above our relationship with God. This way we have to regularly ask him to show us if any of our possessions or desires are getting in the way of our walk with him. We must ask the Lord not only for wisdom regarding that, but also for strength to resist anything that tempts the heart to turn away from him. God, I pray my treasure always be in you and none of my possessions to distraction in this world. Help me never make an idol of everything or anyone and put them before you in any way. I give you honor and gratitude for all the good things you've given me. You are my greatest desire and I put you above all else in my life.